Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we're talking about how good is Arabia. So let's dive right in and continue to have a look at this sieve. All right, so let's settle the city to take a look at the bonuses directly. The first of these is called Righteousness of the Faith. The worship building for their religion can be purchased by any player for just one tenth of its usual faith cost. This worship building is enhanced to add 10% to the science, faith, and cultural output of Arabian cities. Um, this ability is fairly good. Um, it's fairly good for a couple reasons here. Um, the first is, a lot of times, unless you have a faith-based strategy in mind, you're not going to bother with uh, building temples. You know, the, the, the prerequisite for getting any of the religious buildings in this game are to first have a holy site in the city, second have a shrine, and third have a temple. And combined, that is quite a lot of prerequisites, a lot of infrastructure you have to invest in before you can even get access to these faith buildings. So one of the downsides of this ability might be when spreading religion to other players is you're giving them very, very cheap faith buildings. The thing is, most of the time, they're not going to have uh, uh, holy sites up and running in their cities. And if they do, they probably have their own religion, in which case they're probably not getting your religion. So in other words, this benefit is mostly gonna be affecting you and you alone. And additionally, the second part of this ability the actual 10% uh, science, faith, and culture output is only for you. It's only for Arabian cities. So it doesn't matter if uh, one of your opponents has your unique building. Uh, they also, it's not a unique building. It's the building you've chosen for your religion. If they have your worship building, they don't get the science, faith, and culture boost, which is pretty good. And then finally, this, this last part of this is actually really, really good. 10% science, faith, and culture output of a city. That's... I mean, 10% isn't a huge amount in an individual city, especially if you have lots and lots of cities. But overall, this is this is a significant boost for doing something that you are likely going to do anyways, um, or at least have been incentivized by this this sieve to do anyways. So I like these these set of bonuses. Now, this comes at a bit of a downside, and the downside is that you, to take advantage of this, you yourself, as as the player playing Arabia, also have to build uh, the holy site. Uh, shrine and temple and that's quite an investment. Uh, I don't find holy sites to be very useful. Religion as a whole feels fairly weak. There are some faith purchasing strategies that have been okay that do well with very wide religion um, but it's very difficult to fit holy sites into any, any reasonable build order. I mean and you look at priority, priority of districts in there comparatively you're seeing commerce hub, harbor, uh, industrial zone, um, campus, uh, often an encampment in there and all of these are before, in terms of priority, the the holy site. So yeah, you could say, well, I want a religion. I'm gonna build a I'm gonna build a holy site here or there. Anyways, build one or two across the empire. Not all of my cities have to do exactly the same thing. Sure, but this the the type of bonuses you get from religion are very often on a per city basis, right? Like there will be bonuses towards the holy site district in one way or another. Either it boosts like housing, or it boosts amenities, or it boosts, or you get the unique building which boosts maybe science or production or whatever happen you have to take for this. All this requires that you have this infrastructure everywhere. So. Yeah, there's a couple like Defender of the Faith or Tithe or Church Property where you get a little bit of a bonus from having a religion and spreading it around and only having holy sites in maybe one or two cities. But the the quality of the bonus is, is or rather the, the amount of that bonus, the absolute gain that your empire gets from that bonus tends to scale pretty heavily with the number of holy sites you build. And it's just really hard to find both the time to do it and the district cap uh, to build holy sites in your cities uh, compared to the other things that you ought to be building that are better than holy sites. And, you know, maybe this will change if religion gets a big uh, buff somewhere along the lines or these uh, the tenants get a little bit stronger or something like that. Or more uh, civs have very powerful religious abilities that require them to do that. Or maybe faith purchasing becomes some sort of more, uh, more mainstream strat. Maybe then you'll see this uh, this come out a little bit better. But in general, people aren't going to be messing around with religion all that much because it just isn't very good. So that kind of is a nice segue into the second ability here, the last profit. You automatically receive the final great profit when the next to last one is claimed if you do not, if you have not earned a great profit already. And you gain plus one science for each foreign city following Arabia's religion. Let's start with this plus one science for each foreign city. This is a meaningless bonus. This is uh, not impactful. Uh, in this game, it is very difficult to spread religion, or rather, very faith-intensive to do it. You requ are required to invest quite heavily in actual active religious units. The passive spread seems to be comparatively slower compared to Civ Five. It's much harder to seed an early religion and just have it spread everywhere on its own. Uh, you tend to have to be a lot more active about it. Uh, in general, if you are going some sort of faith-based strategy, you do not wish to spend a lot of faith resources to spread your religion. And if you're not going some sort of faith-based uh, strategy, you're probably not going to bother 
bother to spread your religion much at all anyways, because you don't have the resources for it. And then finally, the bonuses from spreading your religion aren't all that good as a whole. Um, so the likelihood of you having a lot of cities that are able to take advantage of this plus one, a lot of opponent cities converted to your religion to take advantage of this plus one science per foreign city is just almost, it's almost non-existent. Maybe in some sort of religious victory, condition versus single player just as the ai and not versus players maybe this is going to be a non-zero impact on the game but for a large part the size of that bonus combined with how unlikely it is that you're spreading your religion to lots of different players in a multiplayer game makes that bonus really really weak for multiplayer and i would say still pretty damn weak for single player um, let's talk about the other part of it. The other part is the part that people think is more interesting and I think is actually less interesting. And that is the automatically receive the final great profit when the next to last one is claimed if you don't already have a great profit earned already. Um, again, this is going to be quite good on single player because what's going to happen is all the AIs found their religion. You're going to get a religion, the religion you didn't have to invest anything in. All you have to do eventually to get to that religion is once you have a profit, build yourself a holy site or preferably time that a little bit better uh, and found your religion. Presto, bam. Uh, a zero cost religion for Arabia or pretty damn close to a zero cost religion. In multiplayer, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, again, religions seem so weak right now that players are not prioritizing religion. They may or may not get around to building uh, holy sites eventually in one city and founding a religion, but a lot of times they don't care. The only religion that I've seen anyone really prioritizing at the moment is follower production. And we will do a, a guide on religious uh, beliefs at some point, uh, but the, the short and long of it is, that as a whole, they're not all that powerful. So even that seems to be relatively low priority, in my opinion, uh, compared to uh, other things you can do. Honestly, it feels like Stonehenge into religion for the almost zero cost uh, wonder religion is the only time people are bothering too, too much with religion as a whole. So in other words, this is going to trigger pretty late. And on the first read of this, that's kind of annoying because it feels like a lot of the Arabian bonuses are uh, are are based around having a religion. So in that sense, if you want to maximize your bonuses from playing Arabia, you really want that religion, which means you don't really want to wait. You don't want to be dependent on your opponents founding all the religions, and you don't really want to wait till much later in the game when the multiplayer environment actually gets around to producing those. So you tend to want to invest in holy sites anyway, especially if you're doing something faith related, like getting your buildings up so you can get your special bonus, which means you often won't actually take advantage of the automatically receive a great profit because you'll be one of the first or second players in the game to found a religion because you're one of the few civs that actually cares about having a religion in their empire whatsoever. So these feel a little counter synergetic to me in multiplayer, although in, of course in single player, uh, this one will be much stronger than it would be otherwise. Now, there is some counter argument to that, at least in my experience with this so far. And that is that in some scenarios, as I said, it's extremely difficult to fit in these holy sites in your build order. But in some scenarios, it has been worth it, at least to me, and I've been experimenting a lot with this with Russia, with Russia with their half off uh, holy sites and a holy site that doesn't count towards your district limit being probably the best example of the civ able to do this. But Arabia perhaps being a second or third best example of one of the civs wanting to do this. Is it maybe worth in the kind of late early game to, to mid game style of play after you have your core districts up, after you have your commerce hub and probably your industrial hub up, then thinking about maybe, especially if you're not coastal and don't have to build the harbor district, but perhaps in that point, maybe investing in uh, holy sites. And you could do that for some sort of mid-game push with uh, faith purchasing. So it, it synergizes very well with theocracy to have a bunch of holy sites. Um, and in the mid-game, you're actually going to start to see this bonus become a little bit more impactful. 10% um, science, if you're making one science, yeah, okay, that's not a whole lot. You, yes, I mean, it's, it's percent based, so it's always going to be the percent increase across all your cities the same and no at every point in the game but the absolute amount of science faith or culture you're getting out of that is going to uh be better the more the more base that you have in that city in other words i feel you know the impact of having 100 well, what's 100 science not ever gonna happen let's say you have 30 science in your city and you're getting three feels a lot more impactful than if you're having one uh, you know three science in that city and you get 0.3 yes it's 10 percent, but the absolute science you're getting from that becomes a little bit more impactful same with the faith and culture output in other words this bonus gives you investing resources to get this bonus gets a quicker payoff once those cities already have some uh decent amount of science culture and faith production to begin with so this bonus perhaps is more of a mid to late game bonus anyways. So if that is the case, perhaps this last profitability isn't as counter synergetic as it might feel since that's about the time that people are going to be uh, uh, 
promoting their religions anyways. So maybe, and I played with this a little bit, I I still, I think, got a holy site in the, the couple games I played as Arabia, uh, but it may be okay to invest in the religious resource as a more mid-game thing as opposed to an early game thing, which is totally counter to how it was in Civ Five, where the earlier you got your religion out in Civ Five, the more impactful it was going to be for you compared to uh, getting it out later where you wouldn't be able to do much because there'd be so many competing religions already spreading their influence into you and you wouldn't have any choices with that. So uh, maybe this could be better than I'm giving it credit for, but it feels pretty weak to me. All right, but let's keep talking about the rest of the Arabian abilities. Let's talk about their unique unit, the Mamluk, which is pretty damn awesome. So, what is it? It's here. It is a knight replacement. It arrives at stirrups, just like the knight. Stirrups, by the way, is a really ridiculous tech, because look at the prerequisites. Ready? Animal husbandry, horseback riding, stirrups. That's it. Those are the only prerequisites. Now, other civilizations... Because knights require iron, they require two iron to build, or you have to upgrade them from heavy chariots with one iron. Other civilizations have to go uh, bronze working first, then into stirrups to do that. Because that's they're going to have to see iron on the map to do that. Um, because there's no prerequisites in this game for this tech, and I have no understanding why there isn't, that makes absolutely zero sense to me, it is possible just to straight rush this unit. And this unit is incredibly strong. Uh, I honestly think that knights, that, that class, heavy chariot, uh, heavy cav as a whole, starting with the uh, heavy chariot and moving up into the knight and then moving into the tank a little bit later in the game, I think this may be one of the absolute strongest units, unit line in the game. Just because at every era that it hits, it is extremely impactful. The chariot is decent, but not great in the early era. Um, it is the knight is amazing in the medieval era and through the renaissance era since there's no horse unit up, uh, Equivalent upgrade in the renaissance era to compete with that and then when tanks roll around again in the modern era It is yet again an amazing uh, Amazingly powerful unit now you may uh, you might consider detouring even if you're gonna do this if You're gonna rush an opponent using this unit and we'll talk about why that that should be a pretty reasonable thing to do um, You may want to detour into the wheel first. So it may be two more techs. It might be mining and wheel uh, plus then uh, animal husbandry, horseback, and stirrups to do that. Um, but why would you do this? You're doing this because this unit is incredibly strong. It has 48 melee strength. Um, the strength of a city that you're attacking is based on the strongest melee unit that that city has, not that city, that that empire has created uh, across the course of the, of the game thus far. Which means that a lot of times, if you're beelining going straight for this tech and straight for this military and upgrading into this military and building a couple and then attacking, a lot of times your opponent is not going to have made very strong melee units at all. They may, You may have caught them only having made a warrior or a horseman, horseman coming in at 35 or not even a horseman sometimes. If it's just a warrior, the, the strength is going to be that raw 20, which really isn't that good, or maybe a spearman, but who, who the hell builds spearmen? They're kind of shit. So 25 combat strength. But and maybe, maybe you'll run into some melee units, but a lot of times that, that city is going to be able to be killed by something like six or seven, maybe eight or nine, uh, just straight up attacks from knights. And especially on online speeds, so this is again, maybe a comparison to multiplayer to single player. In online speed, you level up extremely rapidly. Uh, the cost, uh, the number of attacks that you need to have uh, to level are was one for the first one, and then it's like two from like, to go from like the, the, the first level up to the second level up, uh, which means that if you're healing for 10 every single turn uh, and, and you heal based on the territory you're in, so if you're in your own territory, you're in your own city, it's 20. If you're inside your own territory, it's 15. If you're inside hostile territory or neutral territory, it's 10. So these will heal um, every single turn. So if you're not clear what this unit does, that's what it does. It heals at the end of turn regardless of what happened. But between insta heals, which are assigning promotions, which are 50 healing uh, and are happening nonstop if you're aggressively attacking with these, between pillaging healing, which is anytime you pillage uh, a farm tile, you're gaining uh, health again, and their regular healing per turn, they are fast for combat, uh, for movement rather, extremely powerful, 48 combat strength. There's nothing that compares to them in combat strength in this era, especially if you look at the timing, right? If you look at the timing for, uh, take a look at machinery here machinery requires mining bronze working wheel iron working engineering and, mach and machinery itself uh and doesn't give you any protection in the classical era where you're probably have going to wanted of going to have want horsemen to protect you uh in case your opponents are rushing you there doesn't give you animal husbandry which is probably of these three the most important of these almost always because uh, it allows you to access horses which are a strategic resource and absolutely necessary for defending yourself um the odds that someone has just gone straight for crossbows 
um, compared to uh, while you've gone straight to uh, to knights is much less. This is three techs, this is six. This unit is even then quite much, quite a bit more powerful than crossbows as a whole. Uh, easy, much easier to absorb damage from crossbows while still attacking. In other words, the knight is kind of the super unit. If you want to rush for a unit to go just like cream someone in the medieval era when they have no chance of fighting back with the units they have available, it's knights. And this unit doesn't require iron, so you're not strategically resource limited. It's even better at staying alive because of its healing. It's extremely powerful, extremely fast, extremely good at killing um, the cities in this era of the game because the cities are not that powerful in this era of the game. And it upgrades from a unit that you can build right at the get-go. So if maybe in the early game, you're expecting that you want to rush someone in the medieval, you build a couple heavy chariots instead of a couple warriors in the very early game to protect yourself versus barbarians. And then you uh, save up some gold and you rush straight for uh, stirrups along your tech path. And then you basically super rush an opponent who has no chance of defending against this. I love this unit. This unit is unbelievably good. It's scary as hell settling next to Arabia because you're terrified of what happens when the Mamluks come. So I really like that. If we're not clear on that, I think that's one of the uh, one of the best units in the game right now. All right, let's talk about the Madrasa. The Madrasa is another very interesting um, interesting building. So normally, so this is this is maybe the first thing to talk about. So normally, uh, education is where you unlock universities. Is it this tech right here in the game that you can build universities in your campuses that already have a library? All right, fair enough. Madrasas are different. They are unlocked culturally, and they're unlocked, where is it? Right here, at Theology from the cultural tier, uh, the civics tree here. And they are uh, right here. They're better than a university. So it replaces the university. University is four, four science, one housing, one citizen slot that you can work, so one specialist slot, essentially. Um, these are five science. They have bonus faith and science uh, equal to the adjacency science, excuse me, bonus faith equal to the adjacency science bonus of its district. So if you place that campus in a high, uh, high uh, um, adjacency bonus area, you're going to get extra faith from this building as well. Um, still has the housing and citizen slots, still gives you the great scientist uh, slots, and is available at a different technology than normal. Um, now, if we were talking too, we were talking about potentially Arabia wanting a mid-game strategy for uh, heavy amounts of faith. Well, the, the tech that you want for that, to do that, is you need the um, reformed church policy to do that, which is uh, a, the second tier of government allows you to use faith purchasing. It's going to be down here, but you're going to want a lot of those prerequisites anyways. These these three set up very nicely together. Um, to get theology, you found a religion. To get divine right, you build two temples. And to get reformed church, the boost for each of these, you've spread your uh, religion to six cities, which means there's quite a lot of synergy with uh, these these policies in a row here and with founding a religion, which is kind of nice. And since Arabia is going to want that religion and be guaranteed a religion eventually, um, that works out pretty damn nice. So let's try to take these as a whole. So we talked about all the individual units. Now I did find the Madrasa being uh, available at that civics tech interesting. I don't know yet if it's much faster or slower. I haven't experienced quite enough of that game. Um, a lot of the times the the fact that that is not tied to a military tech is quite interesting because a lot of the times you're going to see tech path being driven very heavily by military. So something like maybe wheel into horseback riding, maybe into stirrups. At some point you may want crossbows for defense. Uh, you're going to want niter. Um, you may not have the time to grab education uh, along the way if you're trying to beeline each of these military techs to stay, stay safe versus your opponents. Uh, it's interesting to me that for Arabia, their, their tech for their science building is independent of the tech for their military. So you can simultaneously be using your civics to get towards the tier two science building uh, while using your science to get towards the uh, the additional military units. So it comes, Arabia strikes me as a very aggressive military civ, particularly in the early game. It's gonna be very difficult to attack them because they can get to their unique unit so damn quickly. It's gonna be very difficult to defend against them because their unique unit is awesome, doesn't require strategic resources, can be upgraded into, and is available so damn early. Uh, their their empire as a whole is going to be quite good at that early war and also a mid game, mid to late game war if they go any sort of faith purchasing. And their other abilities kind of synergize nicely into actually getting high amounts of faith in science and culture, which are all really good if you're going a faith purchasing strategy. Faith is very valuable. Science is always very valuable and culture is always very valuable. So those are going to go together nicely. And the discount on that building means that it doesn't matter how many cities they've spammed. 
you can still get those buildings instantly uh, for basically dirt cheap and still have your faith available for doing things like purchasing units. So, man, as a whole, it's a really cool sieve. It, it's a little bit strange getting used to. These initially feel very counter synergetic. I find that if I just go for a holy site build on Arabia thinking that they, I'm playing them as a religious sieve, I find them actually quite weak because I think holy sites are quite weak. But if I don't let that be my initial priority and I set, instead make that my kind of mid game priority to do that after I have my basic districts up for other things and maybe after I've killed someone with knights, these, these, these abilities as a whole synergize to make this empire very strong because then I'll have double my land with uh, extra cities to plant my special unique building in, uh, as well as being able to tech militarily to keep myself defense, uh, keep myself safe while having a very, very scary unit to help with that. And then uh, the ability to uh, simultaneously tech for science while teching for military, which no other Civ can do because of where the Madrasa is right there. So overall, Excellent Civ, very excited about this Civ, had, had a blast playing them uh, so you, and, and also had a, had a really unpleasant experience playing against them because they're so scary in that uh, the early to mid game there. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button here on YouTube or come find me on Twitch and follow me on Twitch. Uh, we're getting close to the end of our uh, series of how good are each of the civilizations in Civ and at the end of that I will be doing a uh, probably a tier list though, talking about how I think each of the sieves fit together in terms of how good they are compared to the other sieves. So we will have kind of a concluding video for all of these talking about how I think they fit together. So thanks very much for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something and I will see you guys soon.